afternoon. Uh, I'm Micah Richards, and I'm presenting on cryostasis. This is on chapter nine, which is just after the chapter that our previous presenter was talking about. So cryostasis, for those of you who don't know, is the idea of freezing people so that they're able to experience a later time. It's basically we can't try time travel, so we freeze people so that they're unconscious of the time passing. Similar to sleep, but for a much longer period of time. So the general idea is somehow you are put into a chamber, your uh, metabolic processes are stopped, and you're preserved in that state until a time that you specify. If you don't like the political nature, you'll be woken up and getting when your political party is elected. If you have a terminal disease, you can be woken up and there is a cure. Some people just want to wait until there's better technology. Um, one of the main problems with it right now is that there is no way to revive people that have been frozen. <laughs> so Drexler <laughs> made the point, as in chapter three, that we are able to predict where technology will lead. And so he's making the claim that we, it is very evident that we will eventually be able to design um, machines that are able to revive people. And so we should start freezing people today and planning on it because obviously eventually we will uh, have the solution. That is rather scary to me. Um, so, uh, as he was going through, he was describing the body as uh, basically a collection of molecular machines. Whenever you get those all to stop functioning at the same time, they would be preserved. Especially the brain, he defines personality and the essence of being as <coughs> the arrangement of proteins within the brain. And so, if you can preserve those, then you can preserve the person. The problem is that um, you have to do it exactly right, otherwise you damage the tissue. So he proposes um, replacing the water in cells with uh, similar chemicals that instead of becoming solid when they're cooled down, they become just a thick gelatinous uh, mm -hmm. substance. So they're able to take shock and stuff without actually crushing the structures inside. He also proposes sending in a chemical that will, um, it's basically a chain of five carbons with two reactive chemicals in the end, or molecules in the end. And those are able to bind to the, um, the, uh, biological nanomachines within the cells, and by connecting to those, we'll be able to form a lattice, hold them in place, then you put in the gel, that freezes, and then um, people are able to be preserved for a long time. Um, there's different issues with it, main one being we can't revive anybody. Um, other questions are, is just cheating death? Are we basically, um, what happens to the soul as a person is um, basically put to sleep and put into what could be considered death for an extended period of time. Um, another uh, thing that's been a concern is that you will wake up in 100 years and everybody you know will be dead. And so there is that concern for a while. Um, and I often thought of updating. This is a picture of Kim Suozzi. Um, she was diagnosed with a terminal disease recently. And while she was messaging people, uh, on the internet, the idea of cryostasis came up. And so on Reddit, she mentioned that she was interested in it and was able to raise the funds to um, support her, it's cost $70,000 to uh, put herself into freezing at the moment. And so she did that basically with the quote, I've tried every other possible solution, every miracle cure, every diet, everything, nothing can cure me. So I'm willing to go try something extreme and see where that will lead. So it's, I disagree with Drexler. I don't think we should be freezing people right now because I don't think, I think we should have a proof that it'll work before we do something that crazy. But I mean, the technology is there to at least get people to start it. So you take that as you will. And it's the technology of the Any questions? Yes. Um. So you say the freezing theory, so can they just freeze somebody a couple days? You can revive anything. We don't have the technology to do it. We, well, we don't have the technology to revive. I think we didn't have people to revive. So we say put her in a freezer, and we have no idea. Yeah, pretty much. How are gonna... you going to? Shouldn't you be able to detect that somebody is now dead? It's gone? That's it? <laughs> and that's why. Is this cheating death? Is this extending it past the point where you said this is the end, and then people are freezing themselves in the hope that they can be cured later. Did they end up putting yeah, cheese frozen right now? Yes. Okay.
the question about the soul, my only thing is, would it be any different from, because it's like I've had surgery, I've been put under, it's not like I was having a heavenly experience or anything. I'm just saying, they've had things where they stop people's hearts and things like that, so, and I've never heard, I don't know if it'd be a really question of the soul or if you wouldn't even know you've been frozen out of your ears and felt like a couple of days. Exactly. So you know what I mean? Just because of how our minds work. So I don't know if that would really be in the question. But definitely freezing somebody and not knowing you can revive them is definitely an issue. <laughs> Andrew? That's right. Jeremy? That's what I said. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think that if you're frozen, you'd, have, you'd be dead by our current standards but whether they can revive you, because everything is stopped in your body, it's just a bunch of molecules at that point. But if, when you unfreeze it, you can pick up life again, is I think mm -hmm. the issue. Yeah, I guess the question is, you know, with aqueous systems, when you freeze them, water becomes ice and it breaks things. So you still rupture and stuff yeah. when you're frozen. So the trouble is, how do you prevent the freeze damage? Mm -hmm. That's freeze somebody. He was talking about with sending in the First, the chemical to connect all the uh, yeah. molecular machinery so that they don't move, and then replacing the water with a gelatinous solution. I didn't and practice something like that without being inhumane. I didn't practice that on like a monkey or something and kill them. Cats. Cats? No. Well, there are, <laughs> <laughs> well, there are frogs that have similar sorts of um, things. Frogs they freeze themselves in ponds. Yeah, and they have a, a, an antifreeze type of molecule in there in their system that prevents them from um, rupturing their cells when they're frozen. So it's not So what your body would have to be able to replicate that though? You couldn't just put a small thing from a frog no, to a human being? You'd have to, you know, be like an embalming type thing where they pull your blood out and yeah. take other blood into you. <laughs> but we do that too, we do a dialysis all the time. Yeah, that's I mean, how is this any different from putting somebody on a ventilator machine or something like that? Freezing doesn't actually rupture the cells, but it does cause enough damage that they can't be revived as easily. So. I mean, somebody's going to die anyway. <laughs> right? I mean... So you would free the person and think... Yeah, thinking I mean, they can't do them any more damage. You know they're going to die. <laughs> right? So you're not really hurting them by freezing them. Even if you can't revive them, they're no worse off. That's, right. a, that's an ethical question, though. That's, yeah. ethic, that's an ethical yeah. question. Um, what if they freeze them like immediately after they die? Yeah, but then, then you, exactly. But then you may you may decrease decrease the risk that whatever condition they have could be treated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you freeze someone when they're in their first stages of their disease, if they know it's terminal, right? They're thinking, well, the treatment that comes in the future might better work at this stage of my disease than later on. So I'm better off freezing myself now before my body is totally destroyed and wrecked, yes, by this disease. Sorry, it's going to a family though. Mm, probably going to still die anyway. Yeah. Now, I guess another question to ask <laughs> is this one. You know, say you make this contract with, you know, head of Andrew or whatever to freeze you. Jeremy. But a hundred years from now, neither of you guys are around. Yeah. Right? Somebody else has got this company, right? And, you know, had paid a hundred years of rental fee <laughs> in a cryogenic way. You know, now, you know, the new people want and you only have so much room. What are you going to do with those extra bodies that, you know, just floating around in there? Nobody cares about them anymore. All their relatives are dead, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, nobody's going to renew the contract. <laughs> Right, nobody's there. I mean, they ask your great grandchildren, "Hey, you want to keep head alive for another hundred years?" You know, and they go, who? <laughs> and so you got to think, you know, what's going to happen there? You're going to have a bunch of dead bodies to dispose of after a while, <laughs> exactly. right? So, and seventy grand that could have been used way more usefully than freeing yourself. I don't know. That's just kind of foolish. Part of the <laughs> argument was continue getting treatments would have cost that amount anyway. Yeah, 70,000 is nothing compared to... No, 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 I'm saying she's going to die either way. She could have used something else for that. Raise she could something else. Experience life. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry to move die. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's a question we'll figure out when we're all dead and gone. Yeah. I'm freezing myself, so yeah. I'm good. Well, those are bigger questions <laughs> that, that we'll be asking as we go forth in this.